How's it going, Phil Nap? It's Root Junkie here, and once again, we are talking about Docker. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the Docker CLI or um, command line interface. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to come down here to the start menu and you're going to type up here uh, PowerShell. And then what I would do is I'd right click it and say run as administrator just to make sure that everything is good to go. Okay. So we're going to talk about some of the commands. You're going to find all these commands listed below the video. And I just kind of want to walk you through them and show you what they do for you. Okay. So the first one is going to be um, a Docker. So if you just type Docker and hit enter, as long as Docker is set up correctly, you're going to get this um, help file. Okay. And um, in it, we're going to kind of talk through mainly these couple commands right here, these first section right here. And but there's tons in here, okay? They also give you some examples, right? Use case, how to use it, Docker, the option, the command. All right. If you also type Docker dash dash help, it gives you the exact same file. But it's just easier just type Docker without any commands, and you'll just get the help file. So it's just very helpful to have it. So the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna do Docker um, stat. And we're gonna hit enter. And what this does is this gives you a live update of the container we have running. You can see it's called Portainer and um, gives you a bunch of data about it. So very, very helpful. If you want to get out of this, on your keyboard, hit Control C and it takes you out of the live update. If you have tons of containers, it's going to give you stats on all your containers, which is super helpful for troubleshooting or seeing if maybe for some reason your computer is like your containers are, are running tons of your hardware and it's just causing your whole system to bog down. So you'll be able to see all that data. All right. The next one is Docker PS. This is just really easy to list exactly what you have currently set up on here to see your container ID, your images, um, you know, all this data right here, your port numbers, very easy to use. Okay. Next we're going to do Docker info. This is going to give you information about Docker and what is running. And you can see all that quite, quite helpful. Very easy to understand, right? Docker, if I can spell correctly, a Docker version. There's more version information about Docker. You can also do Docker images LS. Um, and it says there's, I think it's actually image LS. Let's try it again. If you hit up arrow whenever you're in here, it'll reset up your next command. So, um, docker image ls, hit enter. There you go. So you can see what we have here. We have the um, portainer image and actually it even shows the portainer docker extension. So you can see both of those right here very easily under that command. Docker container ls. This list your container, which is actually this Docker container ls. You can see this command is very much similar to um, Docker ps. Basically the same thing, right? But ps is a lot easier to remember and to type than Docker container ls. So just trying to give you some. Docker run. This is how you run most containers. You saw this earlier in another video. I'm going to actually set up to run a, another container really quick and just show you what I'm doing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in these parameters. I don't know if I can still type in right. Busy box, okay? So what this is, is this Docker run. So we're running a container. We're running it in IT mode, and then we're going to RM or delete it once it's done. But IT mode basically gives you a working interface so that you can be in a shell within the container. So if you run this, it's going to download it. And you can see how fast it did that. It was super fast. It pulled the image and it go ahead and it brought us right into a shell with inside of this busy box image. And you're basically in a Linux machine right here. And you can run whatever busy box commands you want to do. Really simple. If we exit it, it should delete it, but let's go see if we have it in um, in PS. Let's see. Yep, see? There's no new container for BusyBox because as soon as we exited out of it, it's gone. 
pretty pretty sweet okay the next docker command is docker exec exec which will execute something so if we want to execute a command within a container like busybox if we had one on here or we could even do portainer because it's right here right we would type in that and then let's say we want sh what this is going to do is it just should give me an sh shell inside of it well it didn't want to execute but couldn't figure out the path for portainer i guess but that's what it can do probably we needed to put in like the container id or something like that um, <clears throat> to be able to make it go but that's what it can do it can execute commands with inside running containers okay the next one we're going to do which is the one you're going to use all the time is docker pull and we're going to pull hello world okay this is um, the way you can pull an image to your computer and you've seen it execute before so I'm gonna do it really quick so it's gonna pull the image there you go and then um, if we want to go ahead and make sure it did pull we can do that docker um, image ls and you can see now we have pulled busybox we have pulled the hello world image and we have our two portainer images so I'm just trying to trying to work through this so you kind of understand it there is also a docker push function but you have to have an account with um, docker hub and there's a docker login or log out option that you can use with docker hub and you can actually take images that you've created and built which we're going to get into in later videos and you can push them to docker hub so other people can use them and download something that you've created which is really really cool but that's a video for another time there's also docker network ls and you can see the different networks and network IDs and bridges and things like that that are happening with inside of Docker on its networks. And then you obviously have Docker build as well. And we will use this later to build our own custom images and create build files or Docker files that we can execute um, to really build really awesome Docker images and containers. So there you go, guys. That is the basic overview of these commands if you have docker running on your system already which you should go ahead and start running them get familiar with these they're super super useful uh, um, and you can still see all that same you can really do most of this in the interface or in portainer but you need to understand this side of it too just to see exactly how it's all working so that being said now that we've shown you these let's go into docker and let's see what has changed so right here you can see we still have one container that's running. We have four images. Just like we had four images in PowerShell right here, it also shows it here. It's the same thing. This is just a GUI, a GUI, um, an interface, and the other one is command line, right? CLI, okay? A couple volumes that have been created since then, not just Portina data, no builds yet. So we're getting there. Um, also, if we go into Portainer, same thing, right? So we should have images. There's four images. Okay. Container, one container that's running. It's, it's, it's the same data. It's just another way of seeing it. Different, different interfaces. And you'll see why I like Portainer in future videos more than this um, Docker desktop. Even though you can do, like I said, the same thing. Or you can do it all from command line if you like this better. Lots and lots of options and lots to learn here. So that's going to wrap it up for this little video here, introducing you and kind of getting you a little more familiar with the Docker CLI. I hope you have enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Rude Junkie out.